Can you give us a bit of a feel for the way in which your life has given you a unique capacity to understand the Russia of your homeland and the Britain that you now live in and understand today as part of the West? Mm. Well, I grew up in the Soviet Union uh, with uh, several generations of my family. I talk about it uh, in the book quite a lot, actually. Uh, you know, I come from three generations of people who uh, were living in a totalitarian dictatorship. Uh, and suffering the consequences being my grandmother lives in in the UK now you can go and talk to her she's alive today she was born in the gulag born, born in, a, in the gulag was that possible that to, you know to be born and survive well what happened was her father uh, was uh, a very respected engineer who ended up in the gulag and so he had some privileges and one of them was when he got together with my grandmother's mother that they were actually allowed to live separately from the camp etc but she was born in the gulag just explain for those who might not you know, a lot of young people you and i'm well you're younger than me <laughs> yeah what's a gulag I mean, it's a pretty horrible place but what's a gulag a gulag is a essentially a constant soviet concentration camp for their own citizens who had misbehaved in one way or another, uh, misbehaved in quotation marks, of course, had said the wrong thing, had the wrong opinion, you know, whatever, were, were the wrong ethnicity at points in time, you know. Um, and uh, it was starvation diet, forced labor. I think approximately 10% of the population would, be, would end up being dead at the end of a year. Um, and of course, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, one of my heroes, he wrote the Gulag Archipelago, in which he exposed for the first time, really, the extent of what was happening. Um, and the West came to understand Russia, but we've forgotten it since, I'd suggest. Yeah, and that's where you come in. Well, we came to understand Russia very slowly. There were a lot of people, even in those days, even after it had been revealed, who wanted to whitewash uh, everything that had been happening in the Soviet Union. So not only my own experience growing up in the tail end of the Soviet Union, but also the histories of my family, hearing my grandmother in Ukraine uh, alive today. She's 96 years old. You can go and talk to her, perfectly compass mentis, lived through the German occupation of, of Soviet Ukraine. Uh, her husband, my grandfather, was taken as a slave laborer to Germany. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing I always say about him is, uh, the most dangerous thing you could have been in that period of time was someone who'd been in Germany and come back because everyone like that, Stalin would get straight in the camp or executed because they were a, a traitor or, or, or whatever. So my grandfather never told anyone he'd been taken to Germany until the Soviet Union collapsed. He waited 50 years, John. That's how terrified he was. That was the fear that people had in their minds. And so I grew up with a family full of these stories. My grandmother, who I mentioned, uh, her family were kulaks, uh, wealthy peasants. They had a horse. So that, that was how wealthy they were. Uh, and uh, when the Soviets came and began to expropriate everybody's property, uh, they sent, uh, basically took their house, took every, all their possessions, threw them out onto the street, and actually deported them to Siberia. And my grandmother's little brother, she, she tells the story, starved on the way as a, as a boy. So I grew up with all of that, um, all of these stories of my family. Um, and now I live here in the heart of one of the most prosperous societies in the world. So that contrast, I think, helps me to see things perhaps from a slightly different perspective to most people.